2 Kings 9 Now Elisha the prophet called one of the sons of the prophets and said to him, Gird up your loins and take this flask of oil in your hand and go to Ramoth Gilead. And you will come there and look there for Jehu the son of Jehoshaphat the son of Nimshi. And you will come in and bid him arise from among his brothers. And you will cause him to come in to an inner room. Then you will take the flask of oil and pour it on his head and say, Thus says Yahweh, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then open the door and flee and do not wait. So the young man, the young man of the prophet, went to Ramoth Gilead. Then he came, and behold, the commanders of the military were sitting, and he said, I have a word for you, O commander. And Jehu said, For which one of us? And he said, For you, O commander. And he arose and came into the house, and he poured the oil on his head and said to him, Thus says Yahweh, the God of Israel, I have anointed you king over the people of Yahweh, even over Israel. And you shall strike the house of Ahab your master, that I may avenge the blood of my slaves, the prophets, and the blood of all the slaves of Yahweh at the hand of Jezebel. For the whole house of Ahab shall perish, and I will cut off from Ahab every male person, both bond and free, in Israel. And I will make the house of Ahab like the house of Jeroboam the son of Nebat, and like the house of Bashah the son of Ahijah. And the dogs shall eat Jezebel and the property of Jezreel, and none shall bury her. Then he opened the door and fled. Now Jehu came out to the servants of his master, and one said to him, Is all well? Why did this mad fellow come to you? And he said to them, You know the man and his talk. And they said, It is a lie. Declare it to us now. And he said, Thus and thus he said to me, Thus says Yahweh, I have anointed you king over Israel. Then they hurried, and each man took his garment and placed it under him on the bare steps, and blew the trumpet, saying, Jehu is king. So Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, conspired against Joram. Now Joram with all Israel was guarding Ramoth Gilead against Haziel, king of Aram. But King Joram had returned to be healed in Jezreel of the wounds which the Arameans had struck him with when he fought with Haziel, king of Aram. So Jehu said, If this is your mind, then let no one escape or leave the city to go declare it in Jezreel. Then Jehu rode in a chariot and went to Jezreel, for Joram was lying there. Ahaziah, king of Judah, came down to see Joram. Now the watchman was standing on the tower in Jezreel, and he saw the company of Jehu as he came and said, I see a company. And Joram said, Take a horseman and send him to meet them and let him say, Is it peace? So a horseman went to meet him and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu said, What have you to do with peace? Turn behind me. And the watchman declared, saying, The messenger came to them, but he did not return. Then he sent out a second horseman, and he came to them and said, Thus says the king, Is it peace? And Jehu answered, What have you to do with peace? Turn behind me. And the watchman declared, saying, He came up to them, but he did not return. And the driving is like the driving of Jehu, the son of Nimshi, for he drives in madness. Then Joram said, Get ready. And they made his chariot ready. Joram, king of Israel, and Ahaziah, king of Judah, went out, each in his chariot. And they went out to meet Jehu, and found him in the property of Naboth, the Jezreelite. Now it happened that when Joram saw Jehu, he said, Is it peace, Jehu? And he answered, What peace? so long as the harlotries of your mother Jezebel and her sorceries are so many. So Joram turned about and fled, and said to Ahaziah, There is deception, O Ahaziah. And Jehu drew his bow with full strength, and struck Joram between his arms, and the arrow went through his heart, and he crouched down in his chariot. Then Jehu said to Bitkar his officer, Lift him up, and cast him into the property of the field of Naboth the Jezreelite. For I remember when you and I were riding together after Ahab his father, that Yahweh lifted up this oracle against him. Surely I have seen yesterday the blood of Naboth and the blood of his son, says Yahweh, and I will repay you in this property, says Yahweh. So now lift him up and cast him into the property according to the word of Yahweh. And Ahaziah the king of Judah saw this and fled by the way of the garden house. And Jehu pursued him and said, Strike him down too in the chariot. So they struck him down at the ascent of Gur, which is at Iblium. But he fled to Megiddo and died there. 
Then his servants carried him in a chariot to Jerusalem, and buried him in his grave with his fathers in the city of David. Now in the eleventh year of Joram, the son of Ahab, Ahaziah, became king over Judah. Then Jehu came to Jezreel, and Jezebel heard of it, and she painted her eyes and adorned her head and looked out the window. As Jehu entered the gate, she said, Is it peace, Zimri, your master's killer? Then he lifted up his face to the window and said, Who is on my side? Who? And two or three officials looked down at him. And he said, Throw her down. So they threw her down, and some of her blood was sprinkled on the wall and on the horses, and he trampled her underfoot. Then he came in and ate and drank, and he said, Take care now of this cursed woman and bury her, for she is a king's daughter. They went to bury her, but they found nothing more of her than the skull and the feet and the palms of her hands. Therefore they returned and declared it to him, and he said, This is the word of Yahweh, which he spoke by a servant, Elijah the Tishbite, saying, In the property of Jezreel the dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel. And the corpse of Jezebel will be as dung on the face of the field in the property of Jezreel, so they cannot say, This is Jezebel. 1 Timothy 6 All who are under the yoke as slaves are to regard their own masters as worthy of all honor, so that the name of God and our doctrine will not be slandered. But those who have believers as their masters must not be disrespectful to them because they are brothers, but must serve them all the more, because those who partake of the benefit are believers and beloved. Teach and exhort these things. If anyone teaches a different doctrine and does not agree with sound words, those of our Lord Jesus Christ, and with the doctrine conforming to godliness, he is conceited, understanding nothing but having a morbid interest in controversial questions and disputes about words, out of which arise envy, strife, slander, evil suspicions, and constant friction between men of depraved mind and deprived of the truth, who suppose that godliness is a means of gain. But godliness actually is a means of great gain when accompanied by contentment. For we have brought nothing into the world, so we cannot take anything out of it either. And if we have food and covering, with these we shall be content. But those who want to get rich fall into temptation, and a snare and many foolish and harmful desires which plunge men into ruin and destruction. For the love of money is a root of all sorts of evils, and some by aspiring to it have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many griefs. But you, O man of God, flee from these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, perseverance, gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you are called, and you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. I charge you in the presence of God, who gives life to all things, and of Christ Jesus, who testified the good confession before Pontius Pilate, that you keep the commandment without stain or reproach until the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he will bring about at the proper time, he who is the blessed and only sovereign, the King of kings and Lord of lords, who alone has immortality and dwells in unapproachable light, whom no man has seen or can see, to him be honor and eternal might. Amen. Command those who are rich in this present age not to be haughty or to set their hope on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly supplies us with all things to enjoy. Command them to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, storing up for themselves the treasure of a good foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is life indeed. O Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to you, turning aside from godless and empty chatter in the opposing arguments of what is falsely called knowledge, which some, while professing, have gone astray from the faith. Grace be with you. Hosea 1 The word of Yahweh which came to Hosea the son of Beri in the days of Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, king of Israel. When Yahweh first spoke through Hosea, Yahweh said to Hosea, Go, take for yourself a wife of harlotry, and have children of harlotry, for the land commits flagrant harlotry, forsaking Yahweh. 
So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblaim, and she conceived and gave birth to a son for him. And Yahweh said to him, Name him Jezreel, for yet a little while, and I will visit the bloodshed of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu, and I will cause the kingdom of the house of Israel to cease. And it will be in that day that I will break the bow of Israel in the valley of Jezreel. Then she conceived again and gave birth to a daughter. And Yahweh said to him, Name her Lo-Ruamah, for I will no longer have compassion on the house of Israel, that I would ever forgive them. But I will have compassion on the house of Judah, and save them by Yahweh their God. And I will not save them by bow, sword, battle, horses, or horsemen. Then she weaned Lo-Ruamah, and she conceived and gave birth to a son. And Yahweh said, Name him Lo-Ami, for you are not my people, and I am not your God. Yet the number of the sons of Israel will be like the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured or numbered. And it will be that in the place where it is said to them, You are not my people, it will be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. And the sons of Judah and the sons of Israel will be gathered together, and they will set for themselves one head, and they will go up from the land, for great will be the day of Jezreel. Psalm 119, 73-96 Yod, your hands made me and established me. Give me understanding that I may learn your commandments. May those who fear you see me and be glad, because I wait for your word. I know, O Yahweh, that your judgments are righteous, and that in faithfulness you have afflicted me. O, oh, may your loving kindness comfort me according to your word and to your slave. May your compassion come to me that I may live, for your law is my delight. May the arrogant be ashamed, for they wrong me with lying, but I shall muse on your precepts. May those who fear you turn to me, and those who know your testimonies. May my heart be blameless in your statute, so that I will not be ashamed. Calf, my soul fails with longing for your salvation. I wait for your word. My eyes fail with longing for your word, saying, When will you comfort me? For I am like a wineskin in the smoke, but I do not forget your statutes. How many are the days of your slave? When will you execute judgment on those who persecute me? The arrogant have dug pits for me, men who are not in accord with your law. All your commandments are faithful. They have persecuted me with lying. Help me. They almost made an end of me on the earth. But as for me, I did not forsake your precepts. Revive me according to your loving kindness, so that I may keep the testimony of your mouth. Lamed, Forever, O Yahweh, your word stands firm in heaven. Your faithfulness endures from generation to generation. You establish the earth, and it stands. They stand this day according to your judgments, for all things are your slaves. If your law had not been my delight, then I would have perished in my affliction. I will never forget your precepts, for by them you have revived me. I am yours. Save me, for I have sought your precepts. The wicked hope for me to destroy me. I shall perceive your testimonies. I have seen a limit to all perfection. Your commandment is exceedingly broad.